It is Monday morning in the Philippines, November 11th, and we are watching Typhoon Nika, known as Taraji internationally, making landfall just north of Dilasog. That is just north of Casigoran, along the border of Carino and Isabella province, just towards the east of the Sierra Madre Mountains. And the mountains doing their job protecting the Cagayan Valley, but I'm already seeing you know the rainfall pick up in these places like Iligan over towards Kauai, and got a plenty of friends out there who are reporting that, yeah, the winds are starting to pick up there of course the worst of it is off here towards the west now we do still have that threat of some coastal storm surges here especially as those winds wrap around but the big issue as this traverses the Sierra Madre Mountains we're really going to see that heavy rainfall set up out here and that is going to be heading down into the Cagayan River the uh, Magat River over here I mean all these tributaries this is the big watershed right in there and all of that is going to pile up and eventually start to head downstream so that that's going to be one of the bigger issues here, uh, not just, you know, where this is making landfall, but uh, an ongoing threat throughout the day on Monday as this storm system continues to track off towards the west. But yeah, typhoon conditions likely being seen here in Cassiguron as of recording this right now. The is where our videographer James Reynolds is at this time. Now, I've been watching his video, but the signal has been going in and out to very remote location uh, about as far as you can go without having to take a plane here along the east coast and uh just north of that thankfully no towns really right along the coast where that eye wall is hitting but still uh this storm system packing a punch not only around the center but kind of this whole scope of it with that rainfall extending all across isabella now i do want to note the himawari 8 if you've been tracking this storm has been having issues there's actually just this big swath here it's been going in and out i mean look at this it, it, it's a hot mess i it, it's quite interesting how you know, the Himawari 8s having issues. This is a different look, though, and it's just showing you that microwave imagery as this does near landfall. That inner eye wall did go through a little bit of an eye wall replacement cycle. And reality is, we actually kind of seen this weaken a little bit prior to landfall, thanks to some drier inflow. And I think that EWRC uh, took place. So at this time, it's actually more of a severe tropical storm, uh, Cat 1 type typhoon which is great news this didn't make landfall as a three or a four but uh still signal force three and four is up here across a good portion of uh, central luzon which means typhoon conditions likely as this traverses and tracks off here uh towards the west so yeah let's let's talk a little bit more in detail about what you know what we're seeing out here first starting off with a model outlook with the ecmwf as we track this storm this is making that landfall here on our monday morning track raid over Iligan, uh, no surprise there, and even though it hits the mountains, like I said, that watershed region here, uh, the Magat River, Magat Dam included, is going to be looking at that heavy rainfall throughout the day on Monday, and then this starts to taper off by Monday night. So the good news, it's not a slow mover, it's moving west at about 10 to 15 kilometers an hour, which means by the time we head into Tuesday morning, most of our area outside a few of isolated showers is going to start to see some improvement as it heads off there uh, towards the west so rainfall totals on top of what we're seeing right now uh, still could be an additional two to three hundred millimeters along the east coast of the mountains in the Cagayan Valley though we're going to be still looking at another 50 to 100 millimeters and then even extending off towards the west and then we're talking about the next storm which talk let's let's touch on this because uh, that likely is going to be called Usagi once it's named by the Japan Meteorological Agency or in Olif, I believe that's what it is. Um, oh, awful. Excuse me, I'm getting it right. Uh, uh, that, uh, you know, the ECMWF, it's not named yet, by the way. The ECMWF actually been trying to turn this towards the north off the northeast coast of Luzon, but we can compare that up with the GFS uh, right here. Oh, this is the ECMWF. That is for Wednesday night heading into Thursday morning. And the GFS, though, brings this further towards the south. And we look at the spaghetti models from the GFS and ECMWF, and really both models do more or less say landfall. ECMWF does have that chance of a recurve off towards the north, but yeah, this is still too close to call for an exact landfall or not, or exactly where this could go, but I do think residents in northeastern Luzon, the same people who are currently experiencing this, need to be getting ready again for another possible typhoon in just a few days i don't like getting too far ahead of myself when we're talking about these storm systems because they are serious and they um 
you know, we, we have to concentrate on what's happening now, but I just want to remind you, it's not over yet, and we got another storm in our forecast here that is going to be causing additional issues by the end of the week. I mean, look at the broader picture. Of course, we also still have uh, what is left of Typhoon Mars. It's actually weakened out. You've seen the satellite image. Look how just the shear just ripped this apart, and that's what eventually is going to happen uh, here to... Um, our current storm uh, pushing overhead. But then we have what could be called Usagi. We have Manyi right in here. Um, Taraji, of course. And yeah, and Yingxing. Um, one, two, three, four. When I was making those thumbnails a few days ago, some people were saying it was clickbaity. And I was like, now nah, this is actually going to come together. It's going to be a conveyor belt of storms. And there you go. One, two, three, four. Uh, yeah, it is one storm after another, friends. And uh, unfortunately, with this one passing, I do think we're at least going to get one more typhoon before we start to see things taper off and hopefully uh, begin to improve as our high pressure starts to settle in from the north and kind of draws in some relatively drier air as we look ahead. But for now, yeah, we got, well, let's let's continue to track the issues at hand. So, yeah. I'll keep you posted. I'm meteorologist Robert Spetta. If you like these updates, please, 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 please check out our Patreon. Link is down below. Can't stress it enough. Make sure you also hit that subscribe button. Let's get up to 100,000 subscribers. Let's get there. Let's get there finally after doing this for 15 years. I've been trying to uh, trying to get up there. Anyways, yeah. Shout out to everybody impacted by these storms right now. This is the worst of it right now. It, it will only weaken from here. But the big issue as is this crosses over towards the Isabella area, that includes our friends out here in Kauaian, uh, extending back towards the Maga Dam, extending towards the south into Iligan, and all our communities right in between here. I mean, we got what the... Uh, Seafood River right up in here. You got Carino. Uh, a lot of farming communities. They're going to be looking at some pretty distant and heavy rain as this continues to push overhead. So stay uh, safe. Stay dry out there. And um, hopefully the mountains rip this apart enough where it's not still bringing that full-on typhoon conditions as it crosses the Cagayan Valley. But I think it's going to be it's going to be a long, long day here on our Monday as this heads off towards the west. So stay safe out there, friends.